Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time, yes, we're doing an Axis and Allies Anniversary Edition 1941 playthrough. It's probably going to take a while. How am I going to do it? Uh, I'm going to be filming, I guess, basically everything. Uh, we're going to be doing a country per turn, I think is the best way to go about this. In the 1941 scenario, uh, Germany is up first, so we'll be concentrating on them this episode. I'm not going to really go over the rules. Access and Allies has been out since, God, 1984 or something like that. It's been out forever. It's even earlier. I can't even remember. It's just, it's so long, so long ago. This is the anniversary edition. Now you get a little bit bigger board. It comes in three pieces. They've divvied up the countries a little bit better. Italy is now a playable power. In this one, so there's six instead of five. And I guess without further ado, oh, there's two rules I'm going to be using. And that is there's no passage between C Zone 15 and C Zone 16. That's uh, so one of the suggestions to make things a little bit more balanced. And the other one is I will be doing the fighter escorts uh, with strategic bombing as well. So what that means is you can take fighters with a bomber if, you know, if they can reach. Uh, and then there's uh, a dogfight between fighters, uh, if there's opposing fighters, and then afterwards the bombers can do their stuff, if, if that all works out. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, let's just, uh, I guess we can, basically the turn order is the, the country buys their military units with the IPCs they have, industrial production units. Uh, then they do all their movement as to where they want to attack, then you resolve all your attacks, and you do non-combat movement, and then you do collecting your IPCs at the end. Of course, the IPCs in the world can change because, like India, for instance, is worth three. So if Japan takes India, they will have three IPCs, and the UK will lose three. That's kind of how the game works. All right, let's concentrate down here on Germany. They're up first for the 1941 scenario, so let's get to that. And I will tell you right off the bat, I am not a master strategist. I play these games for fun. I do what looks really cool and neat to do. Uh, and of course it's a dice game, so things can swing horribly one way or the other. Of course I'll be rolling for both sides, so uh, I'll probably have horrible luck on both sides. So we'll see. Okay, so here we have Germany uh, ready to go in 1941, and right here we have Italy and their troops, uh, which is a, a, a difference. It's kind of cool. There's no Italy. This is the, I think, this one in the 1940, the big double board one with the eight foot long map. I don't know, it's crazy. I think Italy's in that one too. And it's definitely in this one. Uh, they're a light, light, lighter shade. These are more of a reddish brown. The Russian troops and the Italy troops are kind of a, I don't know, it's a different color slightly. It's just more of a brown. It's more of a reddish brown. Okay. Here we have Germany. I am going to just kind of zoom in into the locations as to where they're going to move for their uh, first attacks when we get into that. But first up, it's the production phase. Germany starts with uh, 31 IPCs and there is a cost for units. So uh, ground troops are three, uh, artillery is four, tanks are five, fighter planes are 10, bombers are 12, and then you get into the ships. I think the seven for transports. We got submarines are six, destroyers are eight, cruisers are twelve, aircraft carriers fourteen, battleships twenty. That kind of runs down. Oh, an industrial complex. If you want to build one of them, you can. Or fifteen. And I think that's about it. So first up, I'm going to figure out what we want to buy for Germany, and then we're going to come down here and we're going to place those units in there, and then we're going to get into mobilizing for attacks. All right, I think Germany needs more troops on the ground. They currently have three submarines. They have, I think, three or four fighter. They have four fighters, cruiser. I think they're okay in the Air Force and the sea zones. Currently, where we're going to run to a problem for Germany, I think, is the Russian counteroffensive. So we want to make sure we get a lot more boots on the ground. So seven infantry is 21. Tanks are five each. Two tanks is 31. That spends all of the... IPCs for Germany. All right, let's get to uh, combat actions now, or combat moves, where we're going to be starting to uh, do our attacks. All right, we're going to start with the Rommel Offensive. So we're going to move this tank in here, this artillery's coming in here, and the foot soldiers coming in here, ground troops. We also have this transport here. They can move to 1, 2. So he's moving into C Zone 15, picking up two tanks from here and bringing them over and dumping them all. Oh no, you can't do two tanks, I'm sorry. One tank, one infantry, what am I talking about? Yes, transports can carry one infantry and either an artillery 
air, uh, anti-aircraft gun or a tank. So we're going to do that. So that's going to be our offensive here in Africa. Uh, oh, and we're also going to take this bomber. Believe it or not, we're going to go one, two, three, and four. We're also going to have the bomber in the offensive. And that's going to be it for our Africa campaign. We've got a couple of Italian troops still here in Libya. Uh, let's go up now to the sea zones, and then we're going to be looking at Russian uh, attacks. All right, let's send out the U-boats. We've got two here, so we're going to go one, two. We're going to send this U-boat in to take on the UK's uh, transport and destroyer, I guess represented by Canada. And then the other U-boat's going to go one, two down here with another transport destroyer. Now the destroyers negate the submarine's uh, a sneak attack. They get a first strike if there's not a destroyer, but in both those instances, there is. All right, we're gonna take this uh, submarine going in here with this destroyer, and we're also gonna take the cruiser uh, and move it out there as well. We're gonna guarantee we destroy that. And we're gonna leave the transport there for now. We'll figure that out. We also have a plane right here and are we going to bother with a plane? Um, yeah, we are. We're going to send this plane one, two over here. Now it means uh, and it'll have to move two back to uh, its own location. And I think that's going to be it for all the sea zone offensives. And now let's take a look at the Russian front. Yes, there'll be a lot of dice chucking here at the end. All right, uh, I have to really think about what we want to do here. We have not used this transport yet. We can pick up troops from Germany and drop them off uh, here and attack Karelia. It's worth a couple of points. We want to do that. Let me think about exactly what I want to do here, and then we're going to come right back. All right, we're going to try and bite off a lot. We are going to send the two troops from the Bulgaria... Romania and the tank and the artillery into Ukraine. We are going to, the two tanks here are also going to go in here. So that's going to be three tanks. Yeah, we should crush that pretty easily. We've got two tanks are going to go here with uh, a couple of uh, the infantry units. This plane is not going in there. And we are going to have, uh, we're going to use this transport to grab two of the infantry from Germany and drop them into Karelia. Here, I hope we can see all this. These two, well, this one is going to move up here, Karelia. So we've got three going in here, and then we have one, two, oh, we're going to have three planes basically, fighter planes, one, two. And the other one from Norway, one, two. So all three of these planes are also coming in here. There's an anti-aircraft, which is going to be bad. But we're going to see if we can take it. And I think that is going to be it for all the offensives. Uh, so I guess we're going to be starting to roll some dice on all of those attacks. All right, and there's this handy dandy... Uh, board here. It tells you the attackers and all their attack strengths. It tells you the defenders, all their defender strengths. You're supposed to take all the units off the board, put them on here. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to roll the dice. And we're going to keep track of how many hits. So when we get out the dice tray, which we can see here, we are attacking with uh, two infantry, an artillery, two tanks, and a bomber. So how does this work? If an artillery is with an infantry, they attack at two. Uh, so I'm going to have to get out some dice. So let's see. I should have these dice out earlier. And of course I didn't. So we're going to be rolling uh, one infantry all by itself will attack at a once. If we roll a one, we're going to get one hit. We don't. Now we're attacking with artillery and infantry. So they hit on, hit on two and we get no hits. So Germany doing a right on job. Two tanks, they attack at three. So we're going to roll a couple more dice. Hits on a three. Wow, we get one hit, so I'll leave the one there. <laughs> and the bomber hits on a four for attacking a three. So we end up getting a, a total of two hits on the first round. That was pretty sad. All right, well, of course, the uh, British are not just going to sit there and take it. So they are going to defend. And now infantry defends. Infantry and artillery defend at a two. So they have two infantry and one artillery. So that's going to be three dice looking at two. 
Yeah, that's going to be a short playthrough. Uh, well, that's three hits right off the bat for the UK down there. Uh, they also have a, uh, a tank, which defends on a three. Another hit, so that's four. Wow, we're just going to get crushed, aren't we? Four, and then the uh, plane unit is a defense of four. So they didn't miss at all. They got five hits. Every single unit that they had hit. Wow, and now it is time to remove casualties. Holy jumping, that was probably the worst African action I have ever seen. Okay, so we take five hits, so we're going to lose one, two infantry, we're going to lose the artillery, and I guess we're going to lose the two tanks. We lose <laughs> everything. The bomber, we don't lose. Oh, I should say the bomber came one, two, three, four. The bomber has a movement of two. Uh, now we can press the attack which we're not doing. <laughs> All right, so the UK only took two losses. They will just remove the two infantry, leaving them an artillery, a plane unit, and a tank. That is the casualties for that little dust up. And Germany is gonna end the offensive there. They're not gonna continue. That was absolutely horrible for them. All right, see if they have better luck anywhere else. All right, let's check out some sea zones. All right, let's do sea zone, which one is that? Sea zone nine, we got a U-boat. But unfortunately, the UK has a destroyer, so it negates that first strike ability. And what the first strike ability would mean, if the sub hits on a two or less, it just sinks a boat and there's nothing to do with it. And I should say, sea units, the transports do not have anything to do with the battle. So it's just the U-boat versus the destroyer. If the destroyer is taken out uh, and the U-boat survives, then the transport's also destroyed because it would just cruise around and sink it because they don't have no defense really as far as this game goes now i think in real life there were maritime transports that had guns and stuff but the likelihood of taking out a sub not very likely all right let's uh, attack we hit on a two plus we get nothing oh boy germany doing a horrible job all right and the destroyer also hits on a two so it's a two for two i believe yeah destroyers defend at two and subs attack at two so there we go Two for two. Okay, uh, and we can press the attack when we're going to. So let's see. Come on, we're, we're looking for twos. Nope. <laughs> I should just roll them together. Uh, oh my god. So there we go. The destroyer actually, with the depth charges, took out the sub. And that is the end of a conflict. The U boat has been eliminated. Germany off to a fantastic start here. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. All right, uh, I'm going to readjust the camera. We're going to do this CISO. All right, are we gonna have any better luck here in Sea Zone 12? We have a U-boat and then we have a uh, fighter. All right, U-boat, like I said, hits on a two. It doesn't get it sneak attack, it doesn't do anything. And the fighter hits on a three, these dice are, wow, no hits. <laughs> oh my God, this is pathetic. All right, um, they have one destroyer hitting on a two and rolls a three, so nothing. Yes, we're pressing the attack. All right, submarine, a two, nope. Fighter at a three. Fighter finally hit, so the destroyer is gone. We have one hit, uh, so we will get rid of that destroyer and, and the uh, transport. All right, they do get to defend at two, and of course, of course they defend. Now, we can either lose the fighter or the sub, uh, and I'm almost... No, we're going to lose the submarine. Yeah, we're going to lose the submarine. We'll keep the fighter. Oh, man. The U-boats are just dropping like flies. All right, we still have another uh, sea battle to go. Yeah, it's good to see my dice rolling right on right on uh, par of, of normal. Okay, uh, we have a cruiser. Now, cruisers attack at three. They only have one health, though, in the game. They attack at a three, they defend, uh, they attack and defend at a three. They're like a tank unit for the sea. And then of course we have the U-boat. So U-boat hitting at a two. It's a destroyer again. Yes, we sink the destroyer, but the destroyer does get its retaliation. And of course it hits. Why would it not hit? Uh, we're gonna lose the U-boat. It's a lot less expensive than our cruiser. However, we did, we got rid of that UK destroyer. Wow. I, a, minuscule amount of luck this time. All right, let's see if we have any better luck on the Russian front. I suddenly realized this might be a very interesting thing to try to film. All right, I may not um, do all the dice rolling on screen in the next episodes. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna do Corellia here. We've got one, two, three artillery, or sorry, three. Uh, did I not, what did I move in there? Oh, I just moved two infantry with the transport. Ooh, that was pretty bad. Well, anyway. They have anti-aircraft fire. 
If they roll a one on any of these dice, we have three fighters in there, and they each have moved two, so I'm gonna put the little two token. Where's my little two? All of these guys get to move two afterwards. All right, whoa! The world has just had an earthquake. All right, now let me see if I can not drop dice. Over. All right, if we roll all ones, no ones were rolled. All of those fighter planes make it through. None of them get shot down. Yes, a little bit of luck. Okay, we have three infantry for the Germans. They hit on ones. Wow, we get one hit. Huh, huh. All right, I'm gonna leave the one there so we can see we got one hit. Oh, I'll grab another die here. And I hope we can see everything okay. And now we have three fighters hitting on threes. And we get one more hit. Wow, this is just absolutely pretty garbagey rolling. All right, as for the Germans anyway. All right, we have two, two, four, five. We have six total units for Russia in there, all defending uh, on a two. So we're rolling six dice, hitting on twos. Russia and of course they get three hits why wouldn't they they get more hits than the Russian or the Germans that come in with an entire air force blasting in there right on <laughs> okay so two hits for the Russians they'll just lose a couple infantry uh, and four or three hits against the Germans we're going to keep all of our planes and we're going to lose all three German infantry so that was a failed attempt and all we did was manage to weaken ourselves there uh, but we do have three aircraft left, so they can go somewhere else. All right, we have a couple of more offensives to look after here, and then we have to fly everything back where it can go, and then put our new units on the board. So let's get to the last two attacks here in the Russian area. All right, kind of zoomed out a bit more because I'm trying to get everything in the camera. Oh, that looks great. Can we get it there? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's do Poland here. We got two German infantry and two tanks. The two German infantry, of course, hitting on ones. Wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, well, we don't need to roll anymore because there's only two uh, Russian defense. So the tanks hit on three. Did the <laughs> of course, the infantry did all the work. The tanks missed completely. However, the Russians do have two defense of two. And they rolled. Wow. Okay, that offensive worked well. The, the Polish uh, Russian troops there just got absolutely crushed. And wow, we've taken our first bit of uh, land. So we have one. So what happens is Germany's IPC is going to go to 32. Russia is going to drop down to 29. And we're going to put a German marker on there. Uh, that we just, not that place, on Eastern Europe. So we just took it over. And we didn't lose one troop. All right, we're into the Ukraine now. We've got uh, one infantry is going to hit on a one. Nope, missed. And then we have an infantry with an artillery, so they hit on twos. I'm going over this really quick. Wow, another two hits. Oh, we don't need to roll anything else. Let's see, did, this, did the three tanks do anything? Of course. So we had four total hits there. And we have two defense, a three and a four. No defense at all. Wow, the Russian... Uh, front we should have done more attacking there apparently so that Ukraine now that's worth two so now Germany goes up to 34 and Russia drops down from 29 down to 27 IPCs and once again we'll put a little captured uh, marker on there that is the end of all of the offensives that have happened so now we have to fly all the airplanes back that were inoffensive uh, back to uh, the territories where they're allowed to go. All right, let's do that. Oh boy, we had a lot of planes flying back. So this one has a movement, a total movement of six for bombers. It took four to get here. It's got two to go. I think we're going to land it. We might as well land it in Libya with our Italian troops. Give it kind of a little bit of, um, so that's only one, moves no problem. Okay, this plane also has a movement of two. It's gonna go one, two, it's gonna land on France here uh, so it won't be able to move again so all the planes won't be able to move again these planes all can move too and so where do we want to move them this one's going to go to Finland this one will go to Norway and this one can go one two can we well we can't fly to Poland because we didn't own it oh no we did own it we can fly back to Poland so put that one in Poland done and now we're into the non-combat move. So we can move troops around that were not involved in battles. 
So these two, uh, infantry and that artillery weren't involved in a battle. These two, so I don't think we're going to move much. We're going to move this infantry into um, northwestern Europe with the artillery. Kind of shore that up. Or do we want to... Uh, yeah, we're going to put it in here. So at least we have three troops there. Uh, and that's all we're going to do for movement of German troops. And now we get to place the troops that we built in the production phase back on the board. Now, as you'll see here, Germany, we're allowed to put 10 troops down here. And that's our only factory for Germany. We didn't capture anything else. We couldn't use it this turn anyway. So basically all of the troops, I'm going to put the two tanks and the seven infantry right down in Germany. All right, well, that's basically going to end up Germany's turn. They're sitting at 34 IPCs, so we will take... And the game comes with paper money. This is not the paper money it comes with. This is from my other version, which I should mention, I've also dumped into here. I had the 1942 version. Uh, so all of I have double of... Pretty much double of all of the units, except Italy, of course, doesn't come in into the games. So we're going to take 30 IPCs plus another four, and that's going to be what Germany will be able to spend next time uh, when it's their turn and the turn order for 1941 uh, I should just flash that up here for you so you have a look so just give me a second all right so we had some spectacularly bad rolling for Germany especially in Africa and all the sea zones absolute garbage there uh, well we had a little bit of luck all right so here's the turn order now the game the anniversary game you can play a 1941 scenario you can play a 1942 scenario and the turn order is different. In the, we're playing the 41 scenario, so Germany's going first. We come back tomorrow, Soviet Union will be going. Third up, Japan, then the UK, then Italy, and then the United States. Rinse and repeat. How am I going to play the game? I'm going to play the game until it is obvious that one side is there's just no way. So I there's city capture, there's a whole like there's a bunch of ways to play it. It's the way I always played it when I used to play it, and that's just until somebody cries uncle and says, you know what, I give up, That we're done. So we're going to do it that way. It'll become pretty obvious after three or four rounds, if one side is just annihilating the other, there's kind of, you know, just we'll just capitulate and say, okay, that's game over. And of course I'm playing both sides, so I don't have a vested interest in which side wins or not. Just wanted to show you this cool game, how it works. This is the Anniversary Edition, you got a nice big board, I think it's 40... I think it's like 48 inches wide and 26 or something. It's huge, much huger than the other ones. Not as big as the two 1940s that you can combine together. That's absolutely massive. All right, so thanks so much for watching along. Your comments, descriptions like this is Axis and Allies Anniversary Edition 1941 scenario. We just had the opening moves for Germany. Up tomorrow, we're going to see what Russia does on the counteroffensive or whether they're just going to build up troops. I don't know. We'll see what they're going to do. So thanks so much. And hope you'll join me tomorrow for the Continuation Axis and Allies Anniversary Edition 1941. Ah, oh, curse my old eyes! One huge correction. Um, you can't go from Bulgaria, Romania, use the transport and jump across to Egypt because there's no connection there. This Romania are, is C Zone 15, or 16, which I said we can't cross at all. So the tank and the infantry that came over here has to come from France. So basically we're going to put an infantry and a tank back here in Romania, Bulgaria. And I, th I think this might, might have killed my game right there. And then we're going to not move the one infantry there. We're going to move it over here. And I think that will probably... Uh, yeah, oh, we are so toast. Because we... Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> but anyway, I have to correct that. Uh, to get an infantry and an armor in here, it had to come from France. So they tried and they failed pretty darn miserably. All right, that was the correction there. I apologize for that. I thought you could go from here to cross to Egypt and you can't. You will be able to from Italy, but not from Bulgaria, Romania. All right, first correction <laughs> and a bad start for Germany. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Continuation when we get into the Soviet Union. Yes, another correction. I forgot to remove the ships from here. So we did hit the, the UK destroyer. It sank with uh, the U-boat, but the U-boat got taken out. The plane lasted. The plane would have stayed there and it would have sunk the transport. Uh, transports in this version do not get any defensive fire at all. I think in the original one, you got they could roll on a one, but no, they just they get sunk. Destroyer was protecting the transport. Boom, out of here. <laughs> all right. I think that's it for corrections. Wow. 
one turn and have already got two corrections. All right, thanks so much. See you tomorrow for uh, Soviet Union.